What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. It is Saturday edition. It is August 10th. We are back with another video for you. Video might look a little bit longer. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If this video might be a little too long for you, in the description below is every single link that you'll need to check out FantasyTeamAdvisors.com. Check out our Outlier.bet sponsor. The article that coincides with the video is a little bit summary summarization of what we're going to talk about here we've got a ton of information there we also take suggestions so if there are certain things you want to see in these videos or certain things you want to see on the website go check that out and then let us know down below we have two giveaways every single day first way to win all you got to do is be a subscriber to this youtube channel like this video and leave a comment 50 likes on this video a chance at a free week of fta plus that's every sport that we offer of fta plus Current sports, MLB, NASCAR, PGA, MMA, NFL in about a month. Then we've got NBA, and I was looking about dabbling back into NHL, but there's not a lot of interest that I can see. So if this video gets at least 100 likes, you have a chance at a free month of FTA+. Plus. 150 likes, a free $200 a year. 200 or more likes, a chance at a lifetime pass. Now, if this video today gets 200 or more likes, I'm going to give away two lifetime passes in tomorrow's video. So that being said, that's the first way. The second way to win, somewhere in this video, there'll be a keyword. I'll say it out loud. All you got to do is type that in as your comment and a chance to win a week pass as well. So you can combine them. We've only had one winner. Uh, we've had a winner win twice in one day, and that is it. So we're going to roll this right now. This will be the winner just for getting 80 likes. So debonair3838. Dad, why mommy called the pizza man daddy? Okay. Well, the keyword from uh, Thursday's video was dad or daddy. It was dad. Uh, but we're still going to roll this for the free week. And even though the keyword was there, I'm still going to re-roll it for a second winner. So this comment could come up again. And that'll be the winner twice. So congratulations, Debonair. I believe you have an account on the website, but regardless email me dfshelp1 at gmail.com that's dfshelp the number one at gmail.com uh, in the subject line say you are the daily winner for 810 and then your username on the website if you have one if you do not i need a username and an email you would like so this is going to be a the winner for the keyword so anyone that has the word dad uh chase nelson comment was can you start doing money line picks so that is a good suggestion. Moneyline picks. We are going to have a um, a sports betting video along with this. So this is more of a DFS, uh, but we that is a great suggestion to throw in to the sports betting video that goes along with this. So unfortunately, did not have the keyword in this, so we are going to re-roll it until we see the keyword of dad or some sort of that. Dad's no John Cook. Congratulations. Email me and let me know you are eight the eight in the subject line the eight tens uh keyword winner and then if you have a username on the website let me know that if you do not what is a username and email that would be good for you so that being said we have the double header between the rangers and the yankees that is on there i don't believe you can play much at all um any of the games not the early and then just depending yeah that's the games you can't play um, so 16 games, we can actually play 14 of them or 13 of them. The Yankees game, it's just out. It, it does, it's not there to play. So that being said, we're going to break it down game by game, pitcher and batter, everything you need, we've got for you. So buckle up, stick around, let's jump into it. So early starting a little bit later on a Saturday, normally we see like a noon start time, but we've got a 207 start time which is awesome. Then an hour before you got Oakland at Toronto. So looking at this, Osvaldo Bito going up against Toronto splits wise. He has not faced Toronto this year pitching on the road. He's got a 556 ERA in three games. Only one of them has started Toronto. It just depends. Um, he's, he actually had a good game against the Dodgers, a bad game against the angels and a good game against Houston. So Tournament wise, I'm okay with it because of how bad Toronto actually is this year outside of Vladdy. Um, but then looking at that, Beto, it's a, more of a tournament option. 
if you're looking at Toronto bats against him, the only one that's faced him one time was Loperfito when he was with the Astros. And then outside of that, the the Toronto bats against righties, like Spencer Horowitz batting 301, Vladdy batting 319. George Springer had a home run to lead the game off yesterday, batting 236 with 11 bombs. Dalton Varsho's got 12 home runs against righties, but only 188 batting average. Out, Alejandro Kirk is another one. So if I were to look at any Toronto bats, probably going to be Vladdy, Horowitz, Kirk, and Springer. I, I don't love I don't love a, a Toronto stack as much, but if you were to go that way, if you need a fifth guy to go in there, Ernie Clement batting 272 with four bombs, I don't mind either. Next one, Yariel Rodriguez is going in here. Right above it, 7,838, or 386 ERA. Uh, he has not faced Oakland this year. Pitching at home, he's got a better ERA, 275. We did... Um, stack against him the other day with the Yankees, and it, it, they lost the game. But the Yankees didn't put any runs against him. Four strikeouts in that game, um, and then he got lit up by Baltimore. Now Oakland is a bad team; they've never faced him before. Rodriguez for tournaments, I'm okay with because Oakland does strike out a lot more on the road. So traveling, going on there, different time zone, different uh, country, I could see that. Um, Toronto or Oakland bats that. You know, might be good here. Like, I don't love Oakland today. To be honest, I'm avoiding it. Lawrence Butler has 11 bombs, but 238 batting average. Seth Brown, 213 batting average, 10 home runs. You got Zach Geloff batting 201 against righties, 12 bombs. Like, these are all boomer bust plays. They're, uh, Oakland's really not a stack that I have much interest in as of now. Now, at the end, towards the end of this video, we're going to give you the top five pitchers that are going up against the teams that strike out the most. So the top five teams that strike out the most. And then after that, we're going to have simulations. So we are currently we are simulating in the background, and we're going to give you all of the batters that have a 10 out of 10 matchup rating against their opponent for today. And that'll be towards the end of the video. Uh, but yeah, if... To be honest with you, I could see you avoiding the Oakland-Toronto game completely and just going in a different direction. For sure. I definitely could see that. Next game, Detroit at San Francisco. You have Herter coming in. Brant Herter. Um, that's... He, I don't know what to expect out of him. That's what it looks like. Let's see if that's who they have. Yeah, it's to be announced, but they, they think it could be Brant Herter. We don't know. Um, so that's the problem. And lefty pitcher. So if, if in fact it is him or, you know, he's going to be in there a couple of times, he's not going to be in there the whole time. I would probably just be looking at some of the San Francisco bats. Obviously, Matt Chapman always makes sense. Elliot Ramos against the lefty makes a lot of sense. Um, outside of that, like San Francisco bats, Tyler Fitzgerald has been absolutely on fire. They brought Mark Canna over here against lefties and Michael Conforto all hit lefties very well. Those would be the bats that I would definitely look at in this one. And then Logan Webb. Obviously lo love Logan Webb, especially early. He's the number one early. I would take Logan Webb. I would take San Francisco bats. I don't want anything to do with Detroit bats. And I we're not 100% sure it's him as a starter for Detroit, but I still would not use him against Detroit. Third game of this early slate, we've got... Uh, Houston at Boston. Sorry, Tesla SpaceX just sent me a, a friend request on Facebook. I'm sure that's a real account. Um, Boston is one of the five teams that strike out the most. They actually strike out third most out of any team. Um, you do have Spencer, Mr. Spaghetti over here versus Winkowski. Not the best matchups. Eric Getty here, 533 ERA. Splits twice. He has not faced Boston this year. On the road, he actually has a worse ERA, 661 in 10 starts. Not ideal. Uh, at home against Tampa Bay, dominated. Against the Dodgers, did okay. And then at Oakland, bad. At home versus Texas, good. At Minnesota, bad. I mean, middle. And then Toronto, bad. Colorado, good. Very up and down. Um, I, I don't trust him enough. I'm, I am I would not use Arigetti in this early slate. And then Winkowski, I'd rather just look. I mean, splits-wise... At home, he's got a 338. Game log, he's, you know, he's an opener. That's what it is. Uh, so it should be Cooper Criswell, who apparently has 
COVID-19. Um, so yeah, I mean, he was moved to the bullpen. I don't know if he's really stretched out. He hasn't done much. He hasn't pitched since basically June 30th. Um, and that's where we went five innings. I'm fully expecting this just to be a, yeah, I would just look for this to be hitting. I don't trust the pitching in this one whatsoever. And that's kind of where I'd go in this one. Both sides, honestly, it just depends on the lineups that come out. I fully expect a great lineup from everyone. Obviously, the number one I got to get on Houston would be Jordan. The number one I got to get on Boston would be Jaron Duran. Jaron Duran was one of our top bets yesterday, over one and a half bases. He hit really early in the game for us, and we counted our money that way. So, looking at that, let's kind of wait to make sure if when I'm I want to wait on a little bit of news if Winchowski is going to be in there a decent time or if he is going to be held back and since he's only been in the bullpen um we'll kind of wait because we did add the bullpen so if you go to fantasyteamadvice.com under the mlb tab hover over it and scroll down to bullpen stats it's going to break down every day what the bullpen is doing their era the amount of earned runs they've given up this year the home runs so on and so forth so it helps you like especially this day and age where we see a lot of openers that go one or two innings the bullpen comes in we can kind of see how the bullpen does and then you can look at that compare that with the ballpark factors compare that with our cheat sheet and you can kind of see where we're at on this one so i'm skipping the bats are where i want to go for both sides but we got to make sure the the pitchers are going to be in there and how long they're going to be in there but a full stack on both of them i do not care and then san diego at miami uh, Matt Waldron versus Miami. So Waldron coming in. If it'll load. Splits wise. He's already faced him once this year. Seven innings pitched. Eight Ks. I, I like him here. That's where I'd go. The, t- the two pitchers that I even feel comfortable with is Logan Webb and Matt Waldron. And they're the both highest priced pitchers on this early slate. Bats wise it, for Miami. R- Munez coming in. Um, coming off minus... 1.8, giving up six runs against Cincy. I'd be looking at San Diego bats. Hassan Kim, Jake Cronenworth, Jackson Merrill, Manny Machado. Um, these are the ones that I would definitely be looking at. Jackson Merrill has been one of the hottest hitters right now. He's every time I, every day it seems like he's getting a a home run, extra base hit, a game winning hit. He is there. He is there to play. He is my number one on that team. Obviously, Luis Arise is another one we could be looking at as well. So. Early slate four games, it's okay. Don't love this slate. I really don't love it, but I wanted to give you guys this information. Now, we're into the main slate. Weather should be okay. Maybe the Atlanta, Colorado game, a little bit, a little bit sketch, a little bit sus, but. It's Colorado. The weather changes on a dime. I We're kind of looking at that. I, I kind of feel good. Uh, moving on, we'll, we'll see later on. On the cheat sheet, we do have a weather tab, so if it is needed in updating, we will definitely see. So St. Louis at Kansas City is the first game on the slate. It is, in fact, Andre Palante, possibly, versus Michael Waka. So looking at this, he's already faced them once this year. Kansas City got him 6.1 innings, four earned runs, five Ks. Um... That was at home, and it was recently. It was a month ago. Uh, and Kansas City's been one of the hottest hitting teams. I'm still looking at Kansas City bats there. Bobby Wood Jr., Vinny Pescatino, Salvador Perez. Uh, you want a cheap catching option. Freddie Furman could be a cheap option there. Michael Massey is always a cheap option building there. And, and I kind of like MJ Melendez today. And then Walk, on the other hand. We look at him um, facing one of his old teams. Uh Splits wise, he's already faced him once this year. Seven hits allowed in five innings, one earned or four runs, three of them earned. He did get the dub in that game. And that was the same game, so it's the same matchup. Uh it was at St. Louis. If you look at his splits on at home, he's actually better. And it is a pitcher's park. Tournament wise, I don't mind Walker. Uh, but then if we are looking at bats, Wilson Contreras had two home runs on Friday. He looks like he's starting to get back in the rhythm and starting to hit very well. So I would definitely look at him. Alec Burleson, I believe, had a home run as well. I would look at him. Uh, You could look at, just depending who's in there and who we feel comfortable with, 
the bats. So what I'm doing is I'm using outlier.bet, which is our sponsor. I'm using it to look at the players and how they do um, against either BVP or against handedness of pitcher. So in this instance, St. Louis bats against Michael Walker. Nolan Arenado uh, has three home runs and four RBIs in nine at-bats against him. Uh, Lars Newbar, 600 batting average, four for five uh, with or three for five with one home run as well. Um, and then against right-handed pitching this year, Wilson Contreras, I would definitely look at. He's got double-digit home runs. Nolan Gorman has 15 home runs. You got Alec Burleson batting 305 with 16 home runs. Brandon Donovan has nine bombs. Um, Goldie has 14 bombs. Like, Walker for tournaments, but I kind of like stacking on both sides. I like Kansas City stack as a better option, but I do not mind... Uh, if we are looking at um, St. Louis as a, a smallish stack as well. Next in Cleveland at Minnesota, we've got uh, Gavin Williams versus Sean Woods Richardson. Gavin Williams, almost a 5 ERA. He has not faced Minnesota this year. Pitching on the road in three games, 0.59. So he's actually been really good on the road. Um, but Minnesota is a great team. We saw them take, I think they took both games Friday night. They're a game and a half out of first behind them. I could see, and, and again, Guardians are a great team. Just they kind of they didn't do anything on Friday. I believe J Ram didn't do. I think J Ram and Josh uh, Naylor first game of the day, 0 for eight. Um, second game, I know Naylor did get a home run. So the. It's very inconsistent. You see Gavin Williams had a bad game against Baltimore, but good games here in these two. So looking at this, he's been better on the road. Tournament-wise, I'm okay with. But again, Minnesota's a fantastic hitting team. Their offense is dominant, except when they're facing the Yankees, apparently. But we look at um, Minnesota bats against Gavin Williams. No one's hit a home run. But then we look at these bats. Like Jose Moran is batting 351 with seven bombs against righties. Byron Buxton batting 11 home runs, 271. Trevor Larnack, 249 batting average, 11 home runs. Um, overall, they, they're they actually worse against righty. So Gavin Williams in tournaments, I do not mind. He's very cheap at 6,400 on DraftKings. Minnesota's not that good against right-handed pitching. I think we could be in store for a pretty, uh, like a cheap option there to help pay up, especially on this main slate. Might be able to pay up, uh, pay down for him and then pay up at a different another pitcher today. And then if we are going against uh, Cleveland, Sean Woods Richardson, almost a four ERA. He's already faced him once this year. Had success, only one earned run, but I would still be looking. I don't know if I trust him in cash. Um, tournaments I'm okay with, but I'd still be looking at Naylor, Ramirez, Andres Jimenez, David Fry. Um, that would be the, the those batters that I kind of like a little bit more for Cleveland today. Then we go to Cincinnati at Milwaukee. You got Nick Martinez, which they believe it's going to be him. Um, yeah, he's scheduled to start Saturday's game. Game log wise, five innings, one game against Miami, and they lower than that. But it actually had success against Miami. Uh, would have been five days ago. His last start, twenty two point three fantasy points at fifty nine hundred is pretty damn good. But Milwaukee, they can hit. We know that they can hit. They've, I think they put up a ton of runs on Friday. Would not be surprised if we see this kind of same thing again here. So Nick Martinez is going for Cincinnati. And then for Milwaukee, we've got Tobias Myers. So 302 ERA, a very good ERA, has not faced Cincinnati this year. I would be a little bit more weary about this if it were in Cincinnati. Um, but he really has not done much in his last three starts. His last big start he had was against Pittsburgh where he went eight innings with six Ks. Um, so if we are looking at Cincy bats that do well against left hand or right-handed pitching, uh, Ellie batting 298 with 15 bombs obviously makes a lot of sense. Candelario batting 238 with 16 bombs makes a lot of sense. Will Benson 209 batting average but does have 11 bombs. We do have Jake Fraley 282 batting average but only two bombs there. T Tyler Stevenson eight home runs. I would definitely look at him as well. So those would be the bats that I'd look at. I don't know if I trust Tobias Myers. Um, and to be honest, I don't think I really trust uh, Nick Martinez or whomever it's going to be and how long he's going to go into the game. If I am looking at bats here, 
William Contreras obviously makes sense. Willie Adamas makes a lot of sense. Jackson Churio makes sense. Um, cheaper options would be Bryce Terang and Joey Ortiz if we're building a stack for Milwaukee. Then we got the Cubs at the White Sox right now. We got Justin Steele um, versus Chris Flexen. Flexen almost a six ERA has already faced uh, the Cubs once this year. Only went five innings, only gave up one earned run, only four strikeouts. So he, you know, not a big strikeout guy there. Um, not too worried about him in that situation. And then I, I love Justin Steele going up against Chicago White Sox. Yeah. Going up against the White Sox, I am okay with that. I don't want any White Sox bats. Off the top of my head, I, I don't feel like we have to have any Cubs bats today. Cody Bellinger, Dansby Swanson, okay, Michael Bush. But I kind of like in this game, I'd rather just have steel pitching and not worry about the bats. Because we have all these other games we can worry about more bats in that situation. Next game, Baltimore at Tampa Bay. You've got Corbin Burns versus Ryan Pepio off the IL um, is what it appears to be. Let's see if he's on here. See, that's got Drew Rasmussen. So let's see. So they reinstated him. He obviously pitched August 7th. Uh, two innings, so he obviously wouldn't be a starter. It'd be an opener, if anything. So maybe he's going to be the opener, and then we're going to have Pepio as the long relief, which we don't know. And this is why I hate what MLB is becoming, because these openers just screw everything up. I love Corbin Burns here. Tampa Bay's offense has been bad, and I would definitely be looking at Baltimore bats. It does not matter what Baltimore bats. Let's just make sure we know who the pitcher is going for the Tampa Bay race, once that has been established by MLB, then you can kind of do it's it's basically anybody on this um anybody on Baltimore right now. Jackson Holly's been on fire since getting called back up. Santander's in a contract year, having an absolute monster year. Those two, Gunnar Henderson, Ryan O'Hearn. I love Baltimore as a stack. I do not I don't want anything to do with Tampa Bay. And I just don't know who's going to be the pitcher for Tampa Bay for sure. So we'll hold off and we'll see if the simulation's like anything else just in a little bit. We're almost there. Next game, Philly at Arizona. You got Aaron Nola uh, going for Philly. You got Zach Allen going for Arizona. So Nola coming in, 354 ERA. Splits-wise, nothing against Arizona this year. Uh, when he's on the road, he's actually worse on the road. Not by much, 369 ERA. Um, but the problem is his price is up there. They have dropped his price down. You can see he was 10,000 three starts ago, and it's just steadily gone down. Well, it went down, then up one. Now it's down 400. He just hasn't done a ton since July 11th against the Dodgers. Um, Arizona can really hit right-handed pitching. Um Pretty damn good this year. If we were to look at the bats that have success against right-handed pitching for Arizona, against Nola, Jock Peterson batting 300 with a home run. Josh Bell has a home run. Cattell Marte has a home run. Jake McCarthy has a home run. But if we dig in and see which Arizona bats have done well against righties this year, um, you have uh, Del Castillo has one home run, homered uh, Friday night. Um, Jock Peterson bad 287 with 17 bombs. You got Josh Bell bad 251 with 12 bombs. You got A. Eugenio Suarez 233 batting average with 12 bombs. So it is a lower batting average, but Suarez does hit righties better um, for whatever reason. Corbin Carroll with seven bombs against them, and Lord Escurial Jr. 238 batting average, nine home runs against them. Tournament wise, okay with Nola. He just hasn't he, he recency. I don't, something, I don't know what's going on. He just has not hit the value that we are needing for that price. Then Zach Gallen, 376 ERA. He has not faced Philly this year. Pitching at home. Actually, a better ERA, 328. Um, coming off a bad game against Cleveland. Uh, five earned runs in that game. He has given up some earned runs lately, though. Um, and Philly's a really good hitting team. I might fade both pitchers in this one. Philly against him. Trey Turner has a home run against him. Kyle Schwarber makes a lot of sense. Um, Alec Bohm, I would definitely look at. Bryson Stott, I would look at. And Brandon Marsh, I would look at if I were to stack in this game. 
and not take the pitchers here. Next game we've got going on, Atlanta, Colorado is a problem with the weather. We'll obviously have to wait to see if anything changes. Uh, Max Freed coming in, 340 ERA, splitswise, has not faced Colorado this year. Uh, obviously um, got hurt and has been back. Uh, one start, he's been back. In that start against Miami, five earned runs, not ideal. And now it goes into Colorado. That scares me. Um, he's We know he's a stud when he's healthy. Coming off the IL, he did not do anything against them um, in his last start, and that does caution me a little bit. Uh, Colorado bats against Max Freed. No one's really done anything, but Colorado bats against lefties this year. Elias Diaz batting 276. You got Jacob Stallings batting 300 with five bombs. Ryan McMahon batting 269 with six bombs. You got Michael Togliai, nine home runs. You got Ezekiel Tovar, seven home runs. Charlie Blackman, they've actually moved him back up to the leadoff position. If he is in the leadoff role, I love that matchup for him. But the problem is, these batters and pitchers, are, or these batters are going to be, uh, their price is going to be jacked up because it's Coors. It's the Coors effect. Um, I'm probably fading Max Freed for sure. And then Colorado, D- Dakota Hudson, um, 584 ERA, Atlanta. Go wild on Atlanta, depending on the lineup that comes out. Stack Atlanta. They are going to be very expensive, so you might have to find some of the cheaper stacks instead of going with the most expensive stacks. Then the keyword of the day, we are going to go with AirPods. They're right here. It's what I thought. I look down, I see them. So AirPods is the keyword of the day. So the next game, Pittsburgh at the Dodgers. You've got Paul Skeens going up against River Ryan. Now River Ryan comes in 172 ERA. Actually been pretty damn good. Um, ERA wise against Oakland though 9.7 fantasy points is not enough then he did have 27.8 against Houston and then another dud against San Francisco that scares me because his price is up there at 9,000 does have a great ERA strikeouts are very low um, and he hasn't produced as many fantasy points as we would need and then Paul Skeens is Paul Skeens Dodgers have been uh, known to their offense have been lackluster for a while I love Paul Skeens here um, wouldn't be surprised if he has a big game too. So looking at that, I don't necessarily like any of the Pirates bats right now, but I do like Paul Skeens. And then the final game, New York Mets at the Seattle Mariners. You've got Sean Manaya going up against Logan Gilbert. Manaya 3.30 ERA. Splits wise, not face Seattle this year, but Seattle's the number one team that strikes out the most out of any team. So he is in the pitches be crazy section here. And you look, he's coming off back-to-back double-digit strikeouts, 10 against St. Louis, 11 against Minnesota. I like my odds on that situation there. Um, And his price is pretty good. So I like him on the road in Seattle because Seattle strikes out a ton. He's double-digit strikeouts, really good. Two really good games in a row. But he also has some duds in there as well. So maybe you only trust him in tournaments. I get that. Um, I understand that completely. The final pitcher is Logan Gilbert. Against the Mets, 305 ERA, 6-8 record, 143 strikeouts. Um, Home games, 278. So he's really good at home. The Mets are the Mets. I do not mind Logan Gilbert whatsoever. Not really at the moment. Maybe it'll change later on. Not really targeting any batters for either team right now. I would look at the pitchers. I really like Mania for at least pitches be crazy and GPPs. For DFS and Logan Gilbert in tournaments, I do not mind whatsoever. And there you have it. That is the breakdown of every single pitcher, every batter that we can in the games we can play outside of the two Yankees games and then the um, Angels, basically the, the Patrick Corbin slaughter Angels is what it would have been, uh, stacking the Angels here. So DFS or sports betting wise, uh, find the bats you really like for the Angels. And I would do like a parlay, of, a same game parlay of like over one and a half bases because Patrick Corbin's probably going to be lit up once again. It's it's just what's going to happen. So that being said, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, this is sponsored by outlier.bet. 
you've seen it in the other videos if you want to check them out you guys can sign up with the link down below if you sign up with the link down below you go through the five seven day free trial and you get the twenty dollar pass we are going to give you a free month of fta plus if you go through the free trial and do the 130 dollars pass for the month show us the proof we're going to give you three months free of fta plus as well so it is saturday depending on when you watch this video you still have time to check out the mma content on the website and lock some lineups in there it, i think it locks at five central or five i think it's five eastern four central p.m um so we get a little bit more than we did last week so yeah um be on the lookout for everything else uh, we are inching our way towards NFL. We're very excited for NFL. I'm going to put balls to the wall with the NFL content this year. Videos, showdown videos on Thursdays, showdown videos on Sunday night, showdown videos on Monday night, along with uh, weekly DFS videos for rankings um, and a ton of information for you guys. So please hit that like button, hit that bell notification so you guys know when we go live. Eventually, soon, I will be doing... Um, rankings video so uh come next friday i starts my eight weeks of paternity so i will have a ton of time for you guys hopefully bring as much information to your doorstep as i can for any sport that i can that we offer here so good luck today good luck with that whatever you do whether or not you're playing mlb dfs mma if you're doing um showdown for pga Let's just have some fun today, guys. So that's what I've got in this video. Good luck today. Let's get to 200 likes so we can give away two lifetime subscriptions. And let's bring home some bacon. Peace.